Hello and welcome to lesson 12 in this tutorial series on learning how to program using Scratch. In the last lesson we started looking at something really useful for programming and that is a loop or iteration. Something that we can use to repeat instructions a number of times. Now in the last lesson we looked at definite iteration or a definite loop, something that we can use when we know exactly how many times we're going to repeat the instructions. But sometimes we don't know how many times to repeat something. We may never need to repeat a block of code or we might have to repeat it a lot of times. For example, if you've ever had to enter your password, then sometimes you'll get that right first time, in which case the computer doesn't have anything to repeat. But of course, if you've forgotten your password and you type it in incorrectly, the computer will have to repeatedly tell you you've got it wrong and ask you for the password again. And we honestly have no idea how many times it's going to have to do that. But there are lots of other cases where we are going to have to constantly repeat something but we don't know exactly how many times. In computer games, how many times are we going to have to repeatedly look to see if you're tapping a key on the keyboard to move your character? Well, forever potentially or until your character is uh, dead or the game is over. So in programming we often have to repeat code without knowing how many times to repeat it. So this is something called indefinite iteration or an indefinite loop where we don't know how many times we need to repeat something. Uh, in this uh, lesson we're going to look at two examples. We're going to first of all do a very simple password protection system uh, so we can lock people out of our game until they uh, tell us the correct password and we're also going to do a very simple game where we're going to get a pterodactyl to chase our mouse around the screen. We have to try and avoid being caught. So let's look at the password screen first of all. So I've got a new program set up here uh, with a green flag block at the top and my friendly dinosaur all ready to ask us what the password is. So to begin with, we're going to have to ask the user for the password. So we're going to go to the sensing section and ask the question, what is the password? Now, of course, whatever they type in will be temporarily stored in an answer block, but we'll want to transfer that to a variable. So let's go to the variables section and make a new variable. We'll call this response. It's whatever the user's typed in, it's their response. And we'll set that response variable to the answer they've typed in. Now, of course, that could be the correct answer. It could be they've got it right or it could be they've got it wrong. We don't know. Now, if they've got it right, then we don't need to repeat anything. We can just simply say, hello, welcome back. That's it, nothing to repeat. We only have to repeat something if they've got it wrong. So we will need to repeat, uh, repeatedly ask them for the password until they've got it right. So if we head over to the uh, control section here, you can see that the repeat block we used last time is this one here, repeat 10 times. But we don't know that they're going to get it wrong 10 times. They might not. So that's no good for us. Um, we do also have a repeat block that says forever. Well, again, that's not right either because they're probably going to get it right at some point. So we will need an end to our loop and forever blocks can be useful. But they can also be dangerous because potentially the game will never end or the program will never end. So we have to actually drop a little bit further down this category to find the repeat until block. So this is an indefinite loop where it will repeat, but we don't know how many times, maybe none, maybe lots. Let's snap that underneath there. And what are we going to repeat until? We're going to repeat until their response is correct until it equals the password. So let's grab the equals block from operators and then drop the variable response in the left hand side. So repeat until their response is equal to whatever the password is. Let's say the password is the word please. So we can write that in there. So repeatedly ask them the question until their response is the word please. So what is it that we're going to have to repeat? Well, we're going to have to repeat these two instructions here. We're going to have to ask them again, what is the password? 
and then put their answer in response. But it's also a good idea if we tell them that they've got it wrong. So what I'm going to do is duplicate these two lines here and drop them in the repeat block and then put this all back together. But inside this repeat block, if they've got it wrong, I want to tell them they've got it wrong. So let's put in a, a say block. So inside this repeat until block, the first thing we do is tell them um, that is wrong for two seconds and then ask them what is the password. So that loop there will repeat until their response is equal to the word please. So these instructions here might never carry out. If we get the answer right here, then response is already equal to the word please. So we don't need to repeat anything. We don't need to do anything inside that loop. So an indefinite loop may not actually ever run. Uh, that's important. But if it, uh, whether it does run or doesn't run, eventually we're going to come down underneath that loop uh, because we've got it right. So let's do um, another block underneath that says, welcome. There we are. So we've got an option here. We might get it right on this line. We might type the right password in, in which case this repeat until block will never be run and we jump straight down to this say block at the bottom. Otherwise, if we do get the password wrong, then this block will repeat until we get it right. Let's have a look at how this works in practice. So I'm gonna go full screen, restart the program there. So what is the password? Let's get this wrong to begin with. So I'm going to type in nothing. And there we are, it tells me that is wrong and then asks me for the password again. Uh, let's type in something else. No, that's also wrong. So let's type in the correct password now, which is please, and there we are, welcome. So in that case, the program repeated this block two times. So it asked me the question at the beginning, I got it wrong. It repeated this twice until I got it right. But let's see how it's possible to not repeat that at all. Let's go full screen again and restart this program. Let's type in the correct password first time. And there we are, welcome. So in that case, it never did any of these instructions here. These were completely skipped. There was no need to run them. So that is an indefinite loop. Let's look at another example where we're gonna have a little game uh, to play here. So I'm going to get rid of all these blocks of code here, get rid of all that. Um, I'm gonna get rid of that um, sprite as well. And I'm going to put a different sprite in, one that can fly. Let's get this pterodactyl there. There we go, so we've got the pterodactyl. Now he's fine, uh, but there's a couple of things that we'll need to do. And the first thing here is we need to make him a little bit smaller because at the moment he's huge. And if we're trying to move our mouse away from him, he's gonna catch us very easily. So to make a sprite a bit smaller, um, you have to make sure that the preview you've got here is the large preview because a lot of the options down here are missing when you have the small preview. So click on the middle button there to get your big preview. And then you'll see size down here. And this is a percentage. 100 means it's the normal full size. So I'm going to go and change this to, let's say, 40%. There we are. That's not too bad. So 40%. So he's a little bit smaller now, and, and that'll make the game a little bit more interesting. Now, the other thing that uh, will happen is um, that he will end up tipping. Uh, he'll end up rotating in a moment. Um, I'm not going to change this setting now, but it's something which I will show you in a bit. And this is in the direction box. If I click in there, uh, you'll see there are some buttons at the bottom here. And um, if your program is set up the same way mine is, then you'll have the little blue arrow that says all around. Now, we're not gonna worry about what that is now, but we'll see what the problem is a, a bit later on. Uh, so let's just start the program to begin with. So we'll grab the green flag for our events. And what we're gonna do is have a repeat until block again. So repeat until, and what are we gonna repeat until? Well, until that sprite 
is touching the mouse. So we need to go to sensing and right at the top there we can see touching mouse pointer. So this is going to constantly repeat everything inside this block until this sprite touches the mouse or the mouse pointer. So I'm going to come out the screen and start touching the mouse, but the pointer on the screen. So um, repeat until touching mouse. What's it going to do? Well, it's going to do a few things here. First of all, it's going to point towards the mouse. So in motion, we're going to grab this point towards the mouse pointer. Now, this is where we're going to have that problem, but you'll see what I mean in a moment. So once it's pointing in the direction of the mouse, we'll then move, let's say, 10 steps, let, let's say five steps. Let's make it a bit more uh, easy for us to play. So move five steps, point towards the mouse pointer. There we are, gonna repeat that over and over again. Um, now, of course, it may be that it never touches the mouse pointer. Maybe we're really good at this game and it'll never do that, in which case this loop could repeat forever or until you get bored of the game. But eventually, it's likely that it is going to touch the mouse, in which case this loop will stop repeating. So what do we want to happen then? Well, it'll stop repeating when the pterodactyl has caught the mouse. So at that point, we're going to say game over or I've got you or it or whatever you want to do. So let's go into looks and just put a message at the bottom here. Um, got you. There we are. Got you for, let's say, five seconds. There we go. So that's a very simple program. Let's see how that uh, runs. So I'm going to go full screen on this one. Uh, click the green flag and you'll see the problem now. Now I'm moving my mouse. I hope you can see that. I'm moving my mouse around and the pterodactyl is trying to chase the mouse. So it's repeating until it touches the mouse. Let's, it, let's let it touch the mouse. There we are. Touch the mouse, got you, and you can see it's now stopped moving. However, the bird is upside down, um, and that doesn't look right at all. This is the problem that I mentioned um, earlier on, because if we go back to this view here, we can see the direction currently is minus 87 degrees. I can reset that either by dragging this arrow around. You can see I'm rotating the sprite. I know it's 90 degrees uh, to begin with, so I'm gonna type 90 in there so it's exactly right. But we don't want the, although we want it to be able to head towards the mouse, we don't want the sprite itself to spin around. So that's what these options are down here. And we've got three different options. The all around means that the sprite can rotate. We don't want that. The second option is left or right, which means that the sprite can flip left and right. At the moment, the sprite is looking to his right. So if we choose this middle option and our mouse is on the right hand side of it, he'll flip his head and look the other way. And the third option is no rotation at all. It's just simply going to look exactly like that all the time. I think for this game, the second option is probably the correct one there. So I'm going to click on these little double arrows in the middle there and make sure that he's facing the correct way as he is now. And let's see the difference that makes. I'm going to click on the green flag and you can see as my mouse, uh, now actually he's facing the opposite way to the way that I want here. So I might need to rotate him around uh, a different way. But you can see that he's not now spinning. He is simply flying around, following my mouse, and let's let him catch me. There we go, got you. So I think we might need to rotate him uh, around the other way, but that's not a problem. So um, the repeat until block here is going to repeat until it's touching the mouse. And again, it's likely that that's going to repeat at least a few times, but it may not repeat at all. And that's an important point with indefinite iteration. In the first example, we can see how it didn't repeat sometimes. Um, and in this example, we can see that it could repeat for a long time. So these are the two types of loop that we've got, definite loops and indefinite loops. And what I'd like you to do is to have a little go at doing these two games yourself, or the, the two programs, one with the password and one with uh, the little mouse uh, catching game. Try that yourself. If you need to keep, come back to this video and have another look, that's fine. Um, and when you're ready, we'll move on to the next lesson. Remember, if you're looking on the uh, website, which is the uh, computerscience.click website there, then you can actually work through um, all of these 
uh, lessons and there are quizzes and tests as you go through and eventually when you get through to the very end you'll get a certificate with your name on as well but that's an option you don't have to uh, you can carry through watching these videos on YouTube if that is where you are in which case don't forget to subscribe um, right I'll see you in the next lesson lesson 13 where we're going to be using uh, loops again and combining it with strings so we can start looking at how long the text is that the user enters. So when you're ready, I'll see you in lesson 13.